thing that I wanted to point out because we got into the combustion chamber deal about you know the difference in from a 194 valve to a 202 valve and how come putting a 202 valve in if you don't unshroud the combustion chambers you really aren't doing nothing and in most cases you're actually hurting yourself one more little thing here I wanted to add that's quite interesting this is going to be a real good example for you here to look at now what I've done uh, but right when I was doing the exhaust porting, I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the digging, which uh, to enlarge from 150 to 160 when you're doing it the old way with stones is you use a 60 degree stone. And you got to dig at it a while and pop and measure till you get it about right. This is all a 60 degree cut. Let me see if I can get down in there. That's about as good as I can get both of them. This is 60 degrees all the way from right here to here. Up here, uh, probably 10 or 15 degrees, that was the kind of pad that the 882's got. Well, as you can see, it totally takes it out. What I'm getting at here is this diameter right here all the way to here is about 160. To put it in better terms, I took this snap gauge and I took my caliper and I'll let you see 160 and there we are 1601 alright so now we take this and we can lay it across here I'm going to go ahead and focus on one particular hole right now, and that way you'll get a better better view of it probably. Okay. As you can see, the 160 almost touches the green on it. It totally takes away the 60 degrees silver. All right. Now, it don't take much of a genius here or a rocket scientist to look and say, well, wait a minute, look at this hole not the silver part if this is the part that where the valve sits what about this hole this circular area right here that's right boys and girls this area here is actually the hole diameter that big old 160 valve that the tip of it goes there and right up there ain't no air getting right there the air has to get here and then it comes up into the 60 and then it goes boom and bleeds off into that valve well, guess what? That is the hole that it's in. Putting that great big old 160 valve in there ain't doing nothing. Uh, you'd think it would be maybe a little bit of a Venturi effect, but not much. But guess what else it's done? It's moved. Look here. Look how close to the wall that that 160 valve has moved over. It's in the same predicament as the 202 was. So it's shutting off the valve here against the wall closing this area of flow number one and it ain't all that valve and you're not seeing any of this but this circle right here now here's the part that's just going to knock your socks off when we go in here and we measure this this is the diameter going across the board guess what size it is let's go down from the 160 Okay, and pull it in. Now, is that not something? 1.269. That is a major difference. So, this diameter here is all that the airflow is seeing when it comes up. In other words, it's not utilizing that valve. Only thing it's doing is getting a little bit of a Venturi trick which might pull a few numbers a little bit, not much at all. When you look at how much, look how close that that is to the wall. Okay, it's a lot better than the intake valve was, but and on newer heads they move this all the way against the wall and move the intake around because it's harder to get air in than it is to get it out. But 
just wanted to let you see that so when you think about it, look at these two differences right here. Wow, that is major. Okay, there's your 160. This is the 1270. All that work of putting that big valve in there gets you almost nothing. So just think about it. If you're going to put the bigger valves in, you have to go from this to this. Not really that. You don't cut it that much. Probably on a 160 valve, you, when, by the time you poured it and blend your 60 into it, you're probably looking at about a 1550 but still that's 300,000 said be what 1250 350 450 that's 300 thousandths of meat that has to be ported and cut down in here in order to this to be effective 300 thousandths just look at the difference okay so just think about that when you say hey I'm gonna go let's put big valves in there let's go from 194150 to 202160 buddy if you're not going to spend the money on a stage two at least porting to where the stage two is full porting of the bowls and cutting all that out if you don't at least do that you might as well not even do it you really need to go to stage three which is also after porting the bowls unshrouding the combustion chambers and putting a little bit about two inches in on a gasket match that's my stage three and of course i've showed you what 3.5 is that's reshaping the guide and moving that push rod bulge over but just wanted to give you something to think about for the next session that we get into all right, that, I'm an idiot, and I'm deciding to go ahead and take the gamble. I've got 55 minutes to get this done. What I've got to do is, you can see where the gray line is in the valve job. The trick now is to go in there. Usually I have a scribe, and I scribe a line. I don't have the time to do it. So I'm going to have to do an off-the-hip shot to tear that 60 and pull it about 30 thousandths from the edge where the gray is, go all the way around the bowls and blend that thing in because that will pick up another 10 CFM. I've just run myself ragged out of time here, but you know what? I just got to give it a shot. If I'm a few minutes late, they can yell at me, but I think I can pull it off. So anyway, I wanted you to get a shot at it before I got before I started. It looks like afterwards. Now the exhaust, of course, are going to be the worst. Remember me showing you that thing where they're just uh, what is it? Uh, one two fifty. Hell, I'm think I'm brain dead right now, but. Remember the difference was 300 thousandths. I'm just going to try to take some of that out and roll this short turn uh, and bowls on the exhaust and just blend that, pull that radius out and see if I can get it to breathe a little bit more out. We are really at uh, the last prep step before I assemble them. I just, uh, after cleaning them and spraying them and then throwing a little carb cleaner, degreasing them after the WD-40 goes on there to keep them from rusting. Um, got my little kerosene heater. I bring it up for a few minutes, probably bring the head up to maybe, I don't know, 150, 180, about like I did when I pumped it. And uh, I'm going to shoot the, the paint on it, the heat coat. Uh, usually the first layer I'm just real easy on, let it cook, and then a couple more at a time, just so that... Um, the heat does its job of baking the paint. Whenever I do it like this, the paint lasts, you know, God, it never comes off. I'd say probably three times longer than just playing it normally. And it's something you can do in your garage, you know, no trick here. Just uh, get your heat, let it sit on there about 15, 10 or 15 minutes or so. Let it get good and warm. And then uh, I would recommend that you take it off. That's what I'm going to do. I got a place here I'm going to set the head. Because uh, you start spraying it on that kerosene heater and it can catch the spray paint on fire. So anyway, just wanted to show you that little last step. Last little step I do, you've heard of people saying four angle, five angle valve jobs. A lot of people, what they do is they, they count an angle being back cut on the valve. Now what I'm fixing to do now is put a 30 degree back cut, and I only do it on the intake. The exhaust doesn't need it in this particular port. So uh, the way I do it is you can see I tried to leave that black marker. There's the gray line where I lapped it. That's actually the seat. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm using that as a, as, as a, as a go-no-go no go thing. I'm going to take the 30 degree and cut it 
uh, down almost to where the seed is. That way it gives it a good blend. I'm going to do every one of the valves. I'll leave a little bit of shiny right up above it, but this makes sure when the seat's in there and I can got it lapped that I don't go too far and it puts it where the 30 degree rolls right into the seat. Just any little bit. That might make a CFM or two difference. It probably don't do nothing, but it don't hurt to do it. If I can grab a couple of numbers, I'll grab them. You know, anytime I get a chance. I'm a greedy man. Alright, like I said, I'm just going to nip it a little bit, not much at all, just to break that 45 degree edge. Just a touch. 